This your boy DK the Bag, and I'm here doing an exclusive interview with Vereen TV. If you ain't fucking with Vereen, you're green, and you're a fucking fiend, cockroach. All right, man, so what's up, man? What's up, bro? All right, man, so uh, break down the name. DK, DK the, the Bag. Bag. Yeah, break uh, down the name. DK originally come from Donkey. I got that from um, the nigga named Blackie from the G. I used to be pancaking nigga that when I was a jit, so. Nigga had got out of jail, and when I saw him, he was like, boy, I've been hearing about you, so. He was like, we're gonna call your ass Donkey. Then everybody started calling me that shit. I started like not liking the name, so I just started telling people to call me DK. And then the bag shit really come from, I listen to Money Bad Yo a lot, and I fuck with that nigga music, so I said, fuck it, I'm DK the bag. So uh, where are you originally from? Bell Glade, Mott City. The real Mott City from back in the, between 2008 and like fucking, 2012, when shit was real lit. And uh, what what part of Bell Glade are you from? If you had to say mm -hmm. what, like what part would you say? I was born and raised in like, well I was raised in like late breathing shit. But I'm like, really like A Street, I had niggas, you feel me? Go to like, representing <laughs> green and white and shit like that. Used to be, well, mostly A Street, bro. And and what would you say your uh, craziest experience growing up in Bell Glade? From my perspective of from well, what perspective. I experienced yeah, or from, from my what, perspective? What you uh, experienced. Experience? Yeah. Um, I can say when I got shot or when I got stabbed by a bitch. That's one of those two, good. So uh, do you remember the day you got shot? Yeah, vividly. So uh, take us back to like that day, like... Uh, uh, like you want to hear the whole story or just a breakdown? Just a breakdown, like the feeling and all that. Like, a little, uh... All right. It was October the 18th, 2008. Ooh, about eight soon. I was riding on my bike. Well, according to the police report, I had stopped and approached these dudes. This is according to the police report. I stopped and approached these dudes, got out the bike, Told the dude I'ma kill him. I left, came back, and went to shoot, and that's what some dudes told the police. But according to me, in the truth, I had was they ride my bike and just start hearing gunshots and shit, bro. Then jumped out that bitch, started running. Felt like somebody pushed me over the gate. Then I got up. The dog said you shot. Got in the ambulance. Went um was in the hospital for like a week. From the hospital, I went straight to jail. They charged me with two counts of attempted murder. I was in jail for like nine months. I was in juvenile center for like 21 days. And they sent me to the county. I was in that bit for like seven months. Got out on house arrest, then they dropped the charges. And, uh, where and I was you? back on A Street. And where were you shot at? I got shot one time in the back. And like, explain like the feeling. Did you, like, did you even feel I didn't it? really feel it. When I, I was on the gate when I got shot, so it felt like somebody pushed me over the gate, and then when I got up, it felt like something was moving around inside of me, mm -hmm. and then when I started running, it just felt like somebody was poking my inside with something sharp. That's what, it, the aftermath of that shit hurt it the most though, like having staples, yeah. and fucking having a breathing tube, all that crazy, that's what hurt it the most. Cause the gunshot didn't really, do, cause I ain't really even feel it. It just felt like somebody pushed me down. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now would you say you had it hard growing up? I say yeah and no, cause I ain't never like was starving when I grew up. Like, well, we always had food and shit like that. So I always had like the necessities and shit like that. But of course, a nigga always wanted more. But I can't never really say I had it hard. I mean, other niggas' perspective, just because they stand in the hood, they got it hard. But me. I went up hungry, I always had somewhere to stay, lights and shit was always on, so I ain't really had it hard, just like, my daddy went to prison and shit, like that type of shit, like fucked up a bit whole like household type shit though. What would you say the, the worst thing you put your uh, parents through? I can't even really like, say my daddy, cause when I got shot, my daddy was in prison. I used to write my daddy from the county jail, I used to send it to my auntie, she used to send it to him, and he used to write her back and send me letters. But well, I can't ever really say I put my daddy. Through. I don't know how he felt when I got shot, but I say when I got shot, 
My mama. That shit probably hurt her. Well, I know it did. And like, <clears throat> how long did your uh, dad do in prison? He was supposed to do 11 years, but I think he ended up doing like eight or nine, something like that. I don't remember. But he did a long ass time in the feds. And like, how did that situation like affect the person you are today? I mean, it affected me a lot, cause like, I don't know, bro. Like, I'm ill who I'm ill, cause I feel like I would have been like a, in a better position in life. I've probably been a good moral character, but I feel like I'm a good moral character right now. But doing the fact that my daddy went there, that made me who I'm is. So I rather everything stay the same. Like all the shit I went through made me who I'm is. Like I ain't no dummy. I see shit for it happen. Shit like that. And uh, who are some of the people you looked up to like growing up? My uncles and my daddies, all them niggas. That's about it. Red, Toby, Lario. Zone, niggas like that, man. I ain't really never look up to niggas who are celebrities and shit. Cause I never really like, even today, I don't really watch TV like that. So I never was like admired by, I never played sports and shit like that. Except man, after I got shot, to just like make a little good character for myself. But I ain't never really look up to niggas self street niggas. What would you say the difference between like South Bay, Belgrade, and Pokey? If you had to like explain the difference. Alright, Bell Glade, Sideband, Pahokia is the muck. And you section it off, Bell Glade is like the capital of the muck. Side Bay is like the boondocks of the muck. And Pahokia is like, or well, a lot of niggas don't be, they be creeping with a like, little ratchet hole, but they don't be want to be saying it. But I know y'all niggas be fucking on hoes in the cave. But that's how I classify it. Pahokia got some fun in old though. And when did the music come about? Was, was that like before or after you got shot? I started doing music on, um, I've been into like lighting music all my life, but I never really took, I had some songs wrote like in jail, cause you know, every nigga go to jail, like try to be like that rapper and shit. So of course I had a couple songs, but I went, it went up on my mind, like when I get out of jail, I'm gonna be a rapper and all that shit. Yeah. It just happened like, let me see. My old girl used to talk to this dude who used to do music. And I used to be like, damn, that shit sound good. And I just wanted to try it. And I told him I had some shit wrote down. So one day he just grabbed me and took me to the yo with him. And then that's how that shit started. And after that, that was when I, like when I first went, I was scared as fuck. Like, I was like, damn, these niggas ain't gonna like my shit, bro. This shit probably ass. But then they were like, everybody was like, bro, your shit slime. Then that shit made me like, damn, I can really rap something better than some of these niggas. And what was like the support like at the beginning? Like, support? It wasn't really like, I can't really say that because I ain't never really took music serious, bro. Mm -hmm. I used to mostly do that shit for the niggas who were around me. So it was like, on some shit, like, I, I'm doing this shit because I'm entertaining them. Like, I ain't never really do like, I, 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 you need to do this, bro, to get these people to listen to your shit. But now I got the mindset to do that shit. So I can't really say like, Oh, be didn't support me and shit like that. Cause I ain't never really put myself out there, out there like that I should have, you feel me? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, back to jail. How long did you uh, spend in jail? Um, my first time going to jail, I was in that bit for like nine months. Then I did two months on house arrest. <laughs> then I was out for like a couple months. And then man, my homeboy had broken the school to steal some projectors and shit. And I had went back and got out off of that shit. So uh, back to the first time, you say you was facing like uh, two attempted murders, is that? Yeah, two counts of attempted murder mm, and fighting a fire on the public or some shit like that. And how old were you at that time? Because I think you said you went from uh, juvenile to... Yeah, I was 15 yeah. when I got shot and locked up. Wow. So what was it like, like being like a 15-year-old and facing like those serious charges? I never really... It, it was like the whole time, it was like I was a zone out. Like I was there, but I went there though. Was it because, so it was like I was just like really like song that. Was it because like you was like still going through like the pain and all that, or just like the I whole did, situation? I didn't think it was kind of like traumatized. I ain't never been through no shit like that. So it was like my mind. It was it's weird to explain. It's like I'm there, but it's like I'm always thinking about something else. So I'm not even really thinking about even that nigga. You in jail? Like you probably don't get out. You get what I'm saying? And how much time were you facing? 
how facing life, yeah. Okay. And like, what, what, like, how could I say this? Like, some of the people that was in there, like, how did they uh look at the situation? Like, did you have some people that you knew that was in there? Like, damn. Not in the, I saw a couple in, in, um, in the detention center who I knew. Mm -hmm. But like, um, let me see. But I ain't never really like, when I, cause I, I, in my mind, I always had it like I was going to get out from the detention center. Cause I was like, oh, these people got me on some bullshit, niggas shot me, you feel me? Yeah. But there's some niggas, they going to tell the police that I shot at them, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I got to get out of this shit. Like, who the fuck shot me? I don't know. I said, but I don't know who did it, but just think about that shit, you feel me? Yeah. What would you ask me though, bro? I just went off to a whole nother space. Yeah, so you just confused me too. <laughs> so while you was locked up, did you receive like the support you expected? From, from my people? family? Yeah. No, I was still legit when I got locked up. So like my old girl, she had took care of me while I was in that bill. Like I ain't every week she used to send me money. All we had. So I went up really stressing. It was the only thing that really affected me while I was locked up, like my grandma had passed. And I was like real close to her. Like, she the one who basically raised me, and I couldn't go to her funeral and shit like that. Yeah. Other than that, it was like I wasn't even really in jail, but I was in jail. Like, my mind was never there. And what would you say the craziest situation you went through, like, in the county jail? Because you say you was, uh, you was probably, I guess you was recovering. Yeah, but what it was, though, when I, I still had, like, my staples. I had, like, 29 staples. So, from the, from the they came and picked me up from the hospital. From that point on, they had always had me, they put me in confinement right away. Cause I couldn't be in population in the detention center. When they took my staples out that next day, they put me with everybody else. But they still put me in my same, in, a, in my own room. Mm -hmm. And then from the county, I was still in my own room, but it's like I'm coming out with other people. But I had already healed up by then, but not all the way healed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the craziest experience. Oh, my craziest experience. Yeah. But like, um. Cause you know I ain't never been locked up. So cause when I first got to the county, it's this jit named Trip. I had linked up with him while I was in the. And so it was we like we had him and another nigga from the G named Mike. It was a nigga trying to some shit with a TV or some shit, bro. And him and this, this dude from the raw report to fight each other. So they out there fighting. Then nigga from the G start getting the best of the nigga. Somebody jumped in and hit the dude Mike. Then me and Trip tried to jump in, the little nigga just like squonked our ass like bees. That was like the most other than that. But it wasn't no shit. They ain't really put no bruises or nothing on the bed. But it was like, it, it wasn't never no ongoing shit though, cause like how shit is in jail, bro. Like most of the time, like once you fight a bit, and the bitch see, oh, he, gonna, he ain't no nigga who's just gonna go for anything, yeah. he ain't gonna have to keep going through that shit, so. But that one, it wasn't really not. Cause I was in the county though, so I ain't yeah. never really seen no like, Crazy, crazy ass shit. And what are some of the things you had to overcome in life? I say the biggest thing. Yeah. I say I just say myself, like my own complex of what I set up in my head, like as far as I'm trying to be like this, trying to be like a street nigga. That's the biggest thing. Other than everything else. This shit wasn't really nothing though. Just my complex of myself. And what's the biggest misconception about yourself that people, you know, something people think, but it's not really true until they really, really get to know you? What do you say? I say mostly people who know of me, but they don't know me. Cause I know like in Belgrade, but like, like I sit back and watch shit. I don't really talk to people a lot. So I say mostly people who be like, cause niggas are like. Do something to you or your homeboys, and they'll be like, oh, those niggas pussy. But it's the same thing your homeboys just when they did, though. Mm -hmm. So that's what I say, like, far as the niggas be saying, oh, this nigga fucked up for doing this or doing that. That's about it. What's the most uh, interesting fact about yourself that not too many people know? Um, My whole life, bro, I got shot when I was 15, facing life, got out of jail. I used to, I had a um, GPA with like fucking 1.5. I graduated. I brought my shit up to like fucking 2.8. Graduated. Nigga, I went to college. I got three degrees. A lot of people don't know that shit though. I like to like, I like to like research shit and stuff like that. So 
I say that though, because a lot of people see me, they want to think like, oh, got this nigga, this nigga, the dummy, dummy, or something like that, you feel me? But I ain't no dummy. I got plenty of sense, and I got plenty of foresight. And uh, <clears throat> what are some of the things you do different to avoid jail? I've been doing that for the long. I just stay the fuck from around people who I don't fuck with. Yeah. Cause niggas who I've been fucking with, they know what type of time I'm on, so they ain't gonna put me in no position where the, for the, for the make me vulnerable to a situation like that. So I just stay around from niggas who I don't fuck with. I ain't never gotta have to worry about that. I just let some shit. I have to do some shit. A nigga make me zap out of some shit. Yeah. So you say uh, you have like a like you went from like. Being in the streets to like getting like three college degrees. What mm -hmm. are some of the words of like encouragement we you uh, sent to like the youth for somebody that's in the streets? You feel me? Thinking mm -hmm. about dropping out. No, everybody's situation different, bro. Some people be have to do that shit, but I can tell a nigga, bro, you gotta like, you gotta have foresight on shit. Don't never think about right now. I always think about tomorrow, cause I never thought about tomorrow. You feel me? Yeah. You always got to think about the next day, bro. Like, if you're in a situation right now, and you be like, you got to stop and think about that shit. Be like, is this shit really, what going to come behind that shit? That's what I tell them, nigga. Yeah, okay. And what are some of the things, what, like, what's next for you as an artist? I just want to make some music, bro. I just like making music. I just want to start working with people and shit, because I ain't never really take music serious, but I know I can make, like, music most more better than a lot of niggas, but it ain't really about that now. So I gotta figure out a way for to get people to listen to that shit now. Basically, like probably do some clout chasing shit. Whether you know it or not. And uh, where do you see yourself a year from now as an artist? Um, I can't say that. I just want people to listen to my. Once once people start catching on, cause I'm about to start like stepping out more, cause I've been laid back for like years and shit, just watching shit. But now people finna start seeing me more. That's what I say. Yeah. Anything else you want to get off your chest before we close it out? Mmm. Op shit, pop shit. Free that nigga Rallo. Ha! <laughs>